Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambodasa. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambodasa. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambodasa. Homage to the Buddha, the blessed noble and fully self-awakened one. So I thought this evening we'd, uh, we'd have a look at the um, contemplation of the body. Now, the Buddha actually offers us quite a few ways of doing it, uh, but uh, I'm going to go for the um, Asuba contemplations, which translates as the repulsive or the unpleasant parts of the body. It's going to be really wonderful. So... Um, First of all, we have to undermine, well, the purpose of the exercise is to undermine our wrong relationship to the body, whereby we own it, we have, it's something that we have, or we are. So we'll say things like, you know, I have a headache, I've got weak knees, uh, but then of course you will say, I am ill, right? So there's this dual relationship we have, both of which happen to be wrong and lead us to suffering. So that's the purpose of the exercise. Uh, there are other purposes, but I'll mention them towards the end. Now, um, it's good to begin such an exercise by reminding ourselves how precious this life is. So uh, here we, we experience this joy and woe, just like animals do. But we have this developed intelligence, this intuitive intelligence, which has come, according to Buddhism, through countless births. And because of that, we're in this place and we're able to make our way out of suffering. There are other realms which you can also think of as mental states, the hell realm. So people who are, for instance, deeply depressed or in one of the more severe mental illnesses, there's the animal realm where people get drunk. <laughs> there's the uh, there's the um, uh, the insatiable hungry ghost realm, people chasing money all the time. Uh, there's the human, of course. And then there's these angry gods. So we've got lots. Unfortunately, we've got lots of experience of that at the moment with Ukraine and Gaza and Sudan. And finally, there are the happy gods, all those wonderful multi-billionaires who are sitting on their yachts. So those areas, there's not, much, there's not much joy, there's not much hope, rather, of finding liberation because nothing's pushing them. It's this lovely business, this lovely place of being happy and unhappy. And it's, it's an, an inability to maintain that happiness that leads us to seek the end of, or the end of it all. Okay. So, obviously, we can't be here without a body. That's number one. It's through the senses that we experience the world. Everything we come to know has come through the senses. Uh, well, not everything, but virtually everything has come through the senses. Uh, it's through the body we relate, we communicate, we express ourselves. Through the body we work, we do things, we help others. As In other words, creating good karma. And in virtually every meditation retreat, uh, meditation technique, uh, the body is always central to the process. So before we go into these uh, asuba contemplations, these disgusting contemplations, uh, it's always good to apologize to the body for any harm we've done it. Um, and I've got this little verse which uh, you can repeat after me. Uh, and that gives you um, a sort of starting point for uh, this, con this sort of contemplation. Okay. So just uh, closing your eyes for a moment. Whatever harm I have done to you in thought, word and deed, by way of greed, hatred, and delusion. It 
intentionally or unintentionally. I'm heartily sorry for it. And I determine from this day on to treat you with due care and respect. And now this puts us into a good relationship with the body. Now, this is what the Buddha tells us in the Dharmapada. Having understood that this body is like foam, having realized its mirage-like nature, having cut off Mara's flower-tipped arrows, one should, make, one should make himself invisible to the king of death. So these flower-tipped arrows are these little pushes we get, you know, just for that extra bit of cake and do this and do that, see, led by greed. And then he says, knowing that this body is like foam, fully awake to the mirage-like nature, cutting off Mara's flowers, one goes unseen by the king of death. In other words, once we've uh, cut out our wrong relationship with the world, we can presume that dying will no longer be something to be feared. So I'm taking this exercise from a discourse, the, Giramand, the Giramananda Sutta. It's about Giramananda. Giramananda. He's sick, and Ananda's gone to the Buddha and says, what can we do for him? So he says, well, give him these 10 contemplations. So I won't go through the 10 contemplations, but two of them are the, uh, the unpleasantness of the body and then its drawbacks. So now the idea is that as I read through these different parts of the body, and you're sitting in, uh, in meditation, as you contact them through your imagination and through your memory, through your nose, through your eyes, etc., uh, just catch your relationship, right? Most of them I think you'll find fairly neutral, but some you'll have some, uh, some relationship of disgust, right? At some level or other. So it's really getting in touch with that and recognizing that it's not necessary, right? We don't have to feel disgusted with the body because the body is just what it is. And then after that, we'll just run through all these wonderful things, these horrible things that can happen to the body as a reminder that we must continue our meditation with vigor. Okay. So if you just find yourself in a quiet place for a moment... And I shall give you the instructions from the Buddha. So examining our body from the soles of the feet and down from the tips of the hair. No, we'll just go down. We won't come up again now. So just starting at the top there, you see. Just the hair that's on the body. And then there's nails. teeth, the skin, the muscles, the sinews, the bones, The bone marrow, the kidneys, the heart, the 
the liver. The spleen. The lungs. The intestines. The bowels. The undigested food. The bile. The pus. The fat. The tears. The blood. Saliva. Snot. Species, stools. And urine. So now, if you go back to the one where there was some sense of disgust, just bring it back to mind and just get in touch with that relationship. What does disgust really feel like? And then ask yourself, is it necessary? And can we change our relationship to it by seeing it differently? Uh, function, product, biologically, Scientifically, so in this way, we come to accept the body just as it is. But then the Buddha reminds us of all the things that can go wrong. And this is meant to, of course, give us that samvega, that sense of urgency to continue our practice. This body has much suffering and many drawbacks. But this body is beset with many kinds of affliction, such as the following. Diseases of the eye the inner ear, the nose, the tongue, the body, the head, the outer ear, the mouth, the teeth, and lips. There's the cough and asthma, catar, inflammation, fever, stomachache, fainting, dysentery, gastric pain, cholera, leprosy, boils, eczema, Tuberculosis, epilepsy, herpes, itch, scabs, smallpox, scabies, hemorrhages, diabetes, piles, pimples, ulcers, and cancer. 
Afflictions stemming from disorders of the bile, phlegm, wind, or their conjunction. Afflictions caused by change in weather, by not taking care of ourselves, by overexertion, or as a result of past deeds. Cold, heat, hunger, thirst, defecation and urination. And so he asks us to meditate, observing the drawbacks of this body. So again, it's just recognizing that the body is subject to disease. It's not gone beyond disease. It is of a nature to fall ill. Now, this is oh, you know, meant to help us to begin to see the body in a different way. To take care of it, but not to be enthralled by it. Now, uh, by the way, on that list, I added cancer. They probably, they, I don't know whether they had cancer or not in those days. It's not listed. Anyway, what happened was that the Buddha did give this teaching about the unattractiveness of the body in praise of perceiving the unattractiveness of the body and in praise of development of the perception of the unattractiveness of the body. And he went off then for seclusion for half a month. And when he came out, he said to Ananda, why does the Sangha of monks seem so depleted? Because, Lord, the Blessed One, with many lines of reasoning, gave monks the talk of unattractiveness. Spoke in praise of the development of the perception of unattractiveness. The monks thinking, the Blessed One, with many lines of reasoning, has given a talk on unattractiveness. They remained committed to the development of the perception of unattractiveness in many modes and manners. And they, ashamed, repelled or disgusted with the body, sought for an assassin. In one day, ten monks took the knife. In one day, twenty monks took the knife. In one day, thirty monks took the knife. It would be good, Lord, if the Blessed One would explain another method so that this Sangha of monks might be established in understanding. Now, I can't imagine what the Buddha must have felt when he found out that this contemplation he'd given to his monks had driven them to suicide and seemingly uh, to monks helping people to commit suicide. In fact, it was on this occasion that he declared the first Parajika, which is a rule for the monks, which if you break it, you uh, lose your ordination. So anything to do with killing another person uh, is, you know, is not, it's not, <laughs> not allowed. <laughs> so he gave them uh, the contemplation of jhana to produce beautiful mental states. Well, of course, you need time. Uh, to do that sort of um, practice. So another way of doing it is by offering gratitude to the body. But before we do that, let me just uh, remind you of the purpose of this exercise. is to encourage detachment from the body and to especially undermine that relationship of identity. It can sometimes be used, especially in the monastic orders, to cool sexual impulses. So the idea is that when some erotic idea comes to mind, you then remind yourself that this body is also not particularly erotic. And this, sh this should allow the sexual energy to die away. If, of course, um, uh, a person were simply to continue developing that disgust of the body, then they would lose their sexual impulse completely. And it's to undermine society's emphasis on physical beauty and attractiveness. Okay. 
So what I'm going to do is uh, ask you to then go through the body in the same way from the top of the head all the way down to the toes. And as you go down and you visualize that part of the body, just say thank you. Right? Thank you for, for instance, uh, give it a purpose if, if you want. So the skin, thank you for the protection you give this body. Yeah. So just just take your time going down, and then when you finish that, just go into the meditation. Okay, so it's offering gratitude to the body. And I think you'll find that all the cells jump up and down with great joy. Finally, their work is being appreciated. So if we sit in silence and then just begin going down, saying thank you to all the different parts of the body. <laughs> 